moving on. Okay? And part of the hard time of moving on is that you, you, you really have to know your personality. And you have to know if you have that kind of personality that won't turn it loose unless people get back what you think they deserve to get. Okay. <coughs> All right. So it's a father forgive before they know not what they do. The second word was what? Today. Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. And we talked about that as the thief on the cross, right? Uh, how there were two thieves on the cross. All of them were dying. Jesus was dying, so were they. One thief uh, said to the Lord, uh, If you be who you say you are, why don't you save yourself and come back? Um, and the other thief said, We deserve what we are getting. Um, but this man hasn't done anything. Uh, and looked to Jesus and said, When you come into your kingdom, remember me. And Jesus says to him, uh, uh, What? Today thou shalt be with me in paradise, okay? We talk about that being the word of salvation, okay? Uh, that it doesn't matter um, how you get in, you just need to get in. Whether it's deathbed or whatever, uh, just make sure you get in, all right? And we talk about the parable, uh, and we talk about the parable that Jesus told about the workers who he hired at different times of the day. And when it came to pay, everybody got the same pay. And, and the workers who had been there all day thought that uh, the, the, the man had uh, done them wrong because they had been there all day. And uh, Jesus, in telling the story, said, no, uh, I, I'm paying you what I told you I was going to pay you. Okay? And, and all of them got the, the same pay. So whether you've been saved for 20 years or 20 days or 20 hours, or 20 minutes, or 20 seconds, you get the same pay as everybody else. Isn't that, isn't that a gracious God? Yes. That that's a God of grace, okay? That we still make it in, all right? Uh, uh, the word of salvation, okay? The third word was, we looked at was, what? My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Okay? And we talked about how Never before had Jesus uh, experienced a separation from his father, okay? Uh, now, here's the question. What caused him to be separated or to feel separation from his father? Sin. Sin, okay? That he took on, that he took on the sins of the whole world, did he? He took on my sin. He took on your sins. He took on the sins of the whole world. Okay? He became he that knew no sin became sin for us. Okay? He took upon himself all of our sins. Now, uh, uh, we talk about God being holy. And um, you, you, what? You, you, you hear people say, and the Bible says, uh, uh, God says, be holy as I am holy, okay? And a lot of times we think of holy, being holy as uh, never doing wrong, being pure in your walk, right? Without sin, okay? Be holy, all right? Uh, but really the word holy means, really it's a simple definition uh, of the word holy. The word holy means different. Okay, I'm going to try to leave this up here because I'm going to get back to it some kind of way. It means different, okay? Now, it does mean, it does mean we ought to be different from unbelievers, shouldn't we? Yes. Yes. Our conversation ought not be like theirs. Right? Right? Where, where we go ought not be where they go. Okay? What we do ought not be what they're doing. Okay? We, we ought to be different. And in the Bible, when it talks about God being holy, the word is, he's, God is different. And, and here's the point. 
that when you put God beside any other God, the God we serve is different than every other God. Okay? So, a lot of times, uh, when you see gods, they were vindictive gods. And that's what people believe, that their gods were, that, that their gods were vindictive. And many times, when something bad happened, you hear people say, the gods are angry. Have you ever heard that? Uh, especially on television. The gods are angry. Okay? That's why this is happening because the gods are angry. Alright? Well, what if God got you every time he was angry? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, what if God were vindictive every time? And some people have that, some people have that, that, that picture of God that God is just waiting for you to step out of line so that he can knock your head off. And, they, and they're scared. They have that kind of fear of God. And the Bible does talk about fearing God. The, but, but the Bible fear is reverence. And it's not the kind of fear that we should be terrorized. Okay? I, I mean, really. I, those of us who are parents want our children to respect us. We don't want them to be terrorized. Uh, <laughs> no, it, it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be that when you walk in the room, they, they, when you walk in the room, then they they clam up and scared to move. That's not healthy. That, and God is not that kind of God. Okay, He wants us to love Him. He wants us to reverence Him. Okay, uh, but it's not that kind of fear. But God is different. Okay. And while they always saw their God as a punishing God, okay, our God is a God of love, isn't he? Yes. He's a God of love. Unconditional love. There, there are no conditions on God's love. Guess what? When you were, were not saved, and now that you are saved, his love for you was not different. There was no difference in his love. Because when you were not saved, he was trying to draw you to be saved. And it was out of his love for you that he was trying to draw you to be saved. Okay? And, 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 and guess what else? God won't love you any more tomorrow than he does right now. On your best day, God loves you. On your worst day, God loves you. And that love does not change. And that's what makes God different. Okay? Because if God, look, if God wanted to sure enough get us, we've given him reason to get us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. 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 <laughs> we've given him good reason. And instead of getting us, what we experience is, is forgiveness, mercy, and grace. And that's what makes God different. Okay? And the same way God is different, we ought to be different. The same way God forgives, we ought to forgive. Right? Right. Yeah, that's right. Amen. All right. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, so he took on, he took on, he took on our sin. Okay, past, present, and future. Everything that we did, he paid for. Okay, because sin has to be judged. And and here's the good news: Jesus took our judgment. I don't have to pay for it because he already paid for it. Yeah. Isn't that great? Yeah. I mean, I mean, I, I'm gonna get you in a minute. I mean, I mean real. All, all that liquor you drink. <laughs> <laughs> Not talking about weed liquor. Yeah. All that weed you smoke. All, all that, all that 
laying around. We did. He paid for it. Isn't that something? So that that's good news, isn't it? But that's that's great news. Because if I because where would we be if we had to pay for it? And 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 listen, some of the things you think you paid for, just think if you had gotten the whole payment for our behavior. How about that? Yes, baby. Okay, so I, I understand that um, you know, he's not my sin, he's a judgment. But why do we, when you die, you know, they say um, you have to answer to God for all of your sins? Why do you that's a, that's a good, that's a real good question. And you know what? Some of that is not accurate. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, the unbeliever will have to answer. The believer, for the believer, there's a different answer. For the believer, there's nothing to answer. Because Jesus Christ paid the penalty. Okay? Now, if anything for the believer, our works will be judged. Okay? And that's what Bob talks about. Your works will be burned up. Because God's looking at why you did it. Why we did it. So the judgment for me is, well, Mars, I, well, Mars, I know, I know you were a pastor of several churches, and I know that you served me for these, these many years, but, but when I look at it, I don't think you did it all because you loved me. Mm -hmm. Some of it is you wanted your name promoted. You wanted fame. Some people, some people ask because they won't be in charge. They won't be the boss. They're tired of listening to somebody, so they'll just go start that. I, I know people like that. They go start their own. They can do what they and you know, maybe they need to go start their own. Okay? So 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 that's for the believer. That's what will be judged. So, so you say, I see you sing on the choir. Why did you sing? Did you sing that I might be glorified? Or did you sing for the applause? Did you sing? Uh, what's going on? I said, we got to go to the But you, you got to know that people do things for different reasons. And all of them are not out of pure motives. And for the believer, that's the judgment. Okay? Because when we stand before God, Jesus Christ is it, 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 the picture. You have, we already have a lawyer, and that's Jesus Christ. And he's the one who pleads our case to his father. Remember when I gave you all the word uh, justify? And the word justify means what? Declared not guilty. So even though, and, 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 here, and here, even though I did it, I got off. I was declared not guilty, not because of me, but because of my relationship with Jesus Christ. And there is, there lies the difference. And and again, that's what people. That's that's a message we need to give give people. Uh, that, that all that you did, that all that you're doing, number one, you ain't the first one did it. <laughs> okay. Um, but maybe that's the, that's the testimony. You ain't the first one to party. You ain't the first party animal. Okay, partying is old now. Okay. But Jesus Christ can save you. No matter what you've done, he can save you. Right? Right? Yes. No, we don't talk about we don't talk about it. Listen, uh, people people get pregnant, unwanted pregnancies, and we talk about abortions, and people people kind of have in their mind there's some things that are just worse than others. But guess what? Ain't no such thing. Sin is sin. Sin is sin. No matter what you've done, the blood of Jesus Christ can cover what you've done. Isn't that, that's a great, that's a great, uh, that's a great message 
Yes. And that's the message we ought to be telling folks. Okay? I said, we have our, our young people here, our college folk here. And uh, um, uh, one, the worst thing we can do is act like we ain't never, we ain't never right. been young. That's right. That's right. Man, they crazy. What they doing that for? The same reason you did. Same reason you did. So, so um, he took on the sins of the whole world, and because he did that, uh, he uttered the words, uh, "My God, My God, why has God forsaken me?" Okay. All right. Then, then we were talking. This is where we are. Okay. And uh, the next one is, "It is finished." Okay. And. It's also translated, it stands finished. It stands, it is finished, it's, and it's, it stands finished, okay? Well, what was finished? Well, our salvation was finished. Jesus came to do, he came to purchase our salvation, okay? So, so here from the beginning, from, from the beginning when Adam sinned, here's the point. From the moment Adam fell, God put into motion a plan to get us back. It wasn't our plan, it was his. Okay? Because we didn't have the power, we didn't have the strength to make it to him. So he brought us back to himself. Y'all hearing me? Yes. Okay. So, so we, we couldn't get to him. So he came to bring us to him. Okay. So he wraps himself in the form of a man. We call that man Jesus, right? And Jesus Christ walked this earth. But, but before all of that happened, we talked about in the Old Testament, tights and shadows. Remember that? Yes, sir. Okay? O Old Testament pictures of a New Testament Jesus. Okay? Now, you may not see the name Jesus in the Old Testament, but he is there. Okay? And we see different types and shadows. So I told you about Abraham and Isaac. Didn't we talk about that? Yes. Abraham and Isaac. How Abraham and Ab uh, God told Abraham, uh, and, 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 and I always uh, uh, mindful of the words. God says to Abraham, take now thine only son. <laughs> Y'all see the picture? Yeah. Yeah. Take now thine only son. Well, who else had an only son? Uh, God did. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Right? right. Take now thine only son. Take him and sacrifice him on, on the mountain, Mount Sinai. Okay? And Abraham, to his credit, he does it. He takes, he takes Isaac. Uh, marches him, marches him up that mountain, and the third day they look up, they see the place, and Isaac says to his father, well, I see the fire, and I see these sticks, but where's the sacrifice? And, and Abraham says what? God will provide a sacrifice. Okay? Now, really, that was prophetic, because Abraham said it not knowing what was there. Right. And that is, that is real faith. faith. Right. Speak those things, call those things that be not as though they were. That, that's faith. And out of, out, that was prophecy. God will provide. And they get to the place and uh, Abraham is getting ready to kill him. Put some on the altar, wraps him up, has a knife in his hand, and then God speaks back to Abraham and says what? Lay not your hand on the child, but lift up your eyes. You'll see what? A ram caught in the thicket. Here's what we say. God always has a what? A ram. <laughs> God always has a ram in the bush. Okay. Lift up. Your, you'll see a ram caught in the thicket. Kill the ram instead of your son. Now, now, here's the type. Here's the shadow. The word instead. Jesus died instead of us. 
Jesus took what we deserve. Okay? He, he, was, he was the ram that died so that Isaac might live. Y'all get it? Yes, the ram died. Jesus is the ram. Mm -hmm. Isaac lived because of the ram. And we live because of Jesus. Yeah. <coughs> Isn't that great? Yes. Literally, he took our place on that cross. He took our place. He, he didn't do anything. Nothing. <coughs> he was sinless. He didn't do it. He didn't deserve to get what he got. But his love for us was so great that he bore all of our sins and he died instead of us, okay? That's another type, all right? Um, we talked about the scapegoat, right? I know I talked this about to you before, about the scapegoat, how there were two goats and the priest would lay his hands on one of the goats, transferring the sins of the nation to that goat, and that goat was led into the wilderness, okay, symbolizing that those sins could never be found. Okay, now, now, now here's the great part. Do you know that when God forgives you, he forgets about you? He doesn't remember. <laughs> The funny thing is, we remember. Yeah. <laughs> Don't we? We remember. And, and, and we remember to the point that sometimes it causes us to stumble in our walk with Him. We're so busy remembering that it hinders our walk with Him. So, Lord, I can't do that. I, 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 I just did you the ball. <laughs> All that, all that, all that reefer I smoke, and now you calling me to preach. We remember; it's vivid for us. But God is like, what you talking about? I don't know what you talking about. And not only does He forget, here's the best part: He treats you like you never did. <laughs> it's one thing to forgive somebody, mm -hmm. but then to treat them like they didn't do it. Mm -hmm. Now you know we struggle with that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <Yes>. oh. <laughs> we ain't gonna let you forget now. We ain't gonna let you forget. No, we're gonna let you know we remember what you did the last time. Mm -hmm. And there's some validity to that. I, I'm, I, I, I get it. I, I get it. Some of that is, some of that is just a self-preservation. <laughs> just for saving yourself, your feelings. I, I get it. But but really, God, what if God held everything against you that you did against him? How do you like that? <laughs> I mean, what if God started calling the role of your sin? Let's see. <laughs> Let's see here. I see. Oh! Page 164. <laughs> April 3rd, 1975. 7 p.m. 7 o'clock and 7.01.29. Down to the second. <laughs> What if God kept a book of everything we did against him? From then, from the day you were born till now. Mm -hmm. <coughs> but what he does is he forgets. He wipes the slate clean. So that, you, so that we can start over again. And we don't have to worry about what we used to be. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Right? <laughs> another analogy is, another analogy 
if you ever move from one place to another, you change the address, don't you? Yes. Don't you? Yes. You don't, you don't, you don't, when you go home, you don't go to the old house. You go to the new one. Don't you? Yes. Yeah. And you say, well, that was, that was then. This is now. And some of us, when you move, you ain't even want that old furniture. <laughs> <laughs> that broke down stuff was good for the old house. It ain't good enough for the new one. And we men, we men kind of cringe because we know, uh, especially women go through those series, they want new drapes and new furniture. They want stuff painted all over again. <laughs> See, look, we don't yes. you know what's wrong with it. Look fine. What's wrong with this place? Look fine with me. <laughs> no, you change, you change address. You even call the post office. And fill out a form mm -hmm. telling them this is where you we want you to forward our mail because what I don't live there anymore. Right. I'm living in a new house yeah. on a new street. Is that right or wrong? Yeah. Right. And it's the same way with your salvation. When God saves you, He takes you out of the old house, He puts you in a new house with a new street and a new address yeah. and gives you a new name. Isn't that great? Yes. That's a great God. Okay. All right. Okay. I'll send this joke. So, so uh, another type is, is the Holy of Holies. And I already have all that up here because I talked about it earlier. Is the Holy of Holies. All right. Um, that was one of the, that was, it's called the most holy place. All right which was inside of the, of the temple, the, te the temple, all right? And it had uh, the Ark of the Covenant in there, okay? And it, it's where the presence of God dwelt, mm -hmm. okay? God's presence dwelt there to the point where anybody couldn't go in there, okay? The high priest could only go in there. Didn't I tell you about Yom Kippur last week? Yeah. The yes. Day of Atonement? On Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, the priest would go into the holies of holies, into the presence of God, all right? And uh, in the ark were three articles. Aaron's rod that budded, okay? Remember Aaron's rod? Uh, when, when God was uh, telling them which tribe would be the tribe of Levite, the priestly tribe, That when they, they put 12 dead rods in front of each of the tribes, the next morning when they got up, they saw that the, the rod in front of the tribe of Levi had bunny. Okay? And that was inside of the ark. The jaw of manna that was preserved. Remember in the wilderness, God told them, uh, you can't uh, keep it, you, you have to eat it. And God rained manna every day. Okay? Uh, so the jaw of manna that was preserved. And the Ten Commandments, which represents what? The law. Okay? Was in the ark. Alright? Now, here, here it is. It doesn't really matter whether you know, can quote the Ten Commandments or not. None of us can live the Ten Commandments. <coughs> We break them every day. We break them every day. I don't care if you can, I don't care if you memorize them, you can memorize them backwards and forwards. We break them every day. No person can can act can live out the Ten Commandments, the law. We are law breakers. We we break laws. Okay? I saw I was I was driving they saw. Police had their steam going. <laughs> they were looking for lawbreakers. Okay, so you just mind your own business and you just driving and the speed limit is 30 and then you go 45. Lawbreakers. Okay. 
and, and, and some of us continue to break that law. Amen. Amen. <laughs> All right. So, so the law, okay, was in was in the ark of the covenant, okay. Over the ark was something called the mercy seat. Did I talk about that? The mercy seat, okay. Um, the mercy seat is the ark, okay. And over top of the ark, the articles are here. Over top, top of the ark is the mercy seat. Okay? And what the priest would do, the priest would take the blood of the lamb and sprinkle the blood on the mercy seat. That when God would look, God wouldn't see the law that we broke, but he would see the blood that was shed. Y'all get that? Yeah. So, so even now, when God looks at you, God doesn't see you the lawbreaker. God sees you covered by the blood of his son. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that great? Yeah. I mean, you, you're covered. <clears throat> and, and we don't talk about that enough, I don't think, uh, that we have been blood washed. We've been covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. Okay, so that uh, uh, God, instead of, here it is, instead of giving us justice, okay, justice says you get the punishment that's due because you broke the law. But instead of God giving justice, he gives what? Mercy. Mercy. Okay, he gives mercy. Great is, thy, great is thy faithfulness. New mercies we see every day, don't we? Yes. New mercies. Yesterday's mercies aren't even good enough. When you woke up today, God had given you new mercies. Okay? All right? That's a type. Okay? Again, that's a type. Law, justice, mercy, the blood of Jesus Christ. Okay? Because what the Bible says is, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. Something had to die. Y'all get that? Yeah. Something had to die. The something before Jesus was us. But after Jesus, he paid the price. He, 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 paid, he paid the price. He paid the penalty. Okay? So now we look at where Jesus is. It is, it is finished. Okay? Salvation. <coughs> we, we are saved from the power of sin. That's finished. Sin has no more power over the believer. Before, before you accepted Jesus Christ, you, you, we did what we wanted to do, didn't even bother us. And we didn't even have the strength not to do it. Okay? And, and what, you probably, what, we pro what you probably found out now is, now that you say it's still, it's still a struggle to do right. Y'all not going to say anything to them. It's still a struggle to do right. Okay, even being saved, okay, it's a struggle. It's a, it's a warfare. Okay, because the script talks about when I would do good, evil is always present. Right? You, you, it's not that we don't know right and wrong. Sometimes, the truth be told, sometimes we choose the wrong. Well, I can see by the looks of y'all, none of y'all chose to do wrong. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. Uh, but the power of sin, the power of sin was broken. Okay. Now, because God is on the inside of us, now you have, you have the power to say, 
no to sin. Still a choice because you can still do whatever you want to do. It's a choice, but the power is there to say no. You don't have to do it, okay? And more and and and, and more of what probably ought to be going on is not trying to say no to sin, but what we ought to be saying is what yes to God. Get busy doing the will of God. Instead of, look, don't try to stay out of trouble. Get busy doing good stuff. You see the difference? One is reactive, one is proactive. Okay? I don't hate, I don't mind on a workshop for the devil. Ever heard that? If you idle, the devil will work on you. Okay, but what we need to do is, get, is to get busy serving God. If you busy serving God, it won't leave a whole lot of time for some other stuff. <laughs> uh. <laughs> yes, yes, get busy serving. Okay, being that choir rehearsal, so that means that you, that's at least two hours you're going to be somewhere doing something else. <laughs> Or thinking about doing something else. Real. Okay, yeah, get busy reading the Bible. Pray. Uh -huh. After I got saved, I was, I was 30 years old when I first got saved. Uh -huh. And I was so mad that I, it took me that long, you know, I said, I did everything I can to tell that devil's kid. <laughs> yes. I guess is a prayer at that point then to keep your heart focused more so on the will of what God would have you do as opposed to I guess cheapening the works for his kingdom listen to what you say in the Lord's prayer thy kingdom come thy what? thy will, will, be, thy done. will be done on earth as it is in heaven Right, isn't that what we say? That, that we say, but that thy will be done. If we would be, if we would be about doing the will of God, Amen. it would keep us out of some stuff. Okay, deliver, give us this day our daily bread. Deliver us from evil. Isn't that what we pray? Deliver us from the, the evil one. Okay, and sometimes the best way to, be, to get delivered from the evil one is to get busy doing godly stuff. I mean, if you idle, go go help feed the poor. Go to shelters. You, you see what I'm saying? Get busy. Get busy working. Because if you get busy working. It'll keep you out of some other some other things. Yes. Okay? You lonely. Go to them shelters. Go to the hospice. Walk through intensive care. It'll help you. <laughs> It'll help you. You'll see some things. And you'll see how blessed you really are. Yeah, and you, 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 you walk out there and say, Lord, thank you. Praise the Lord. That's how you walk out of there. Okay, just grateful. You won't be looking at your house that way ever again. Yes. Your life will look a whole lot better than that. Okay, so, so let's be busy doing the will of God. And so many times, that's what we don't do. We go from Sunday to Sunday. Listen. You're not going to have a whole lot of strength just going to church on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Sunday, look, I'm going to get me wrong, but Sunday is good. I enjoy worship and all that kind of thing. All, I enjoy all of that. But listen, you, the Bible study comes at a time when your tank is running low again. Yeah. 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 
Yeah, your tank is getting low again. He said, oh, let me go to Bible study. And by the time you get back to Sunday, he said, your tank is running low again. Because you, you, you need this. Okay, it keeps you going. It keeps you encouraged. Okay, it gives you strength. Okay, so we ought to be about doing the will of God. Okay, get busy. All right, one of the reasons, listen, if you haven't noticed, notice I put young people to work. Yeah, yeah. look around right the back. I put them to work. No, mm -mm. all that energy. <laughs> No, my days of doing what Brother Gaines does is over. I don't move as quick as he does. No, them days are gone. And I ain't doing that no more. No, you, you train young people with energy. And, and not only do they have the energy, they have their smart, intelligent. Right? Smart people. So we're going to have them sitting on the side. Wait for what? No, put them to work. Uh-uh, put them to work. Mm -mm, they in here right now. I'm just proud of them as I can be. That's right. That's right. I'm proud of them as I can be. No, I, I, I look at them. No, put them to work. Get that cow's temple. Get it in. Uh-uh, just it doesn't say you have to be a, a certain age. Does it? Uh-uh, no. Put them to work. Okay, because also, I, I hate to say this like this, but you know, they are teachable. Yes, 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 yes. I can, I can, I can, I can mold them. I can bend them. You can't bend a tree when it's over. You <laughs> won't work. No, but you see, so, so, so when I'm gone, so when I'm gone, the, the next pastor will have this young, smart group of people Amen. that he can draw off of. Amen. Okay? Oh, uh, put them to work. Okay? Put them to work. Because <laughs> we need them to serve. Okay? All right. The power of sin is broken. And guess what else is broken? The power of the devil over your life is broken. The devil can't do to you whatever he wants to do. He's on a leash. He can only go but so far. Okay. Now I don't know about you, but I don't like dogs. Now, I know some of y'all have no dog lovers. Not God bless you. Love you, girl. I, I, I no dog lover like that. When I walk in, I'm, I'm, I'm scared of them. <laughs> that's, why, that's why I'm scared of them. Yeah. Um, uh, if, when I would walk down the street, and you see these stories about these 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 horror stories about these dogs attacking people. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And I'm like, no, I ain't going to. Look, these the people out there taking walls, they have sticks with them. Yes. Yes. You know, they carry sticks and mace and stuff with them. Yes. You know, cut, cut. well, anyway. <laughs> but have you ever been scared by a dog you thought was loose, only to find out later he was on a chain? Yeah. <laughs> it startled you. It scared you, right? You, you jumped. Okay? And then, and then when you saw that he was chained, you said, ah. <laughs> well, well, that's, that's the devil. He's on a chain. He can only go but so far. And no matter what's going on in your life, he can only go but so far. Because ultimately, God is at the other end of his chain. Y'all like that? <laughs> And you've got to know that. You've got to know that. And, and I, I, I think I did talk about there is something called the permissive will of God. Yeah. There's some things God permits. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He 
He allows some things to happen in your life. Okay? And, and even when God allows it, ultimately it's for your good. At the end of it, it's going to be for your good. Now you may not think so while you're going through it, but I'm telling you, at the end of it, it's going to be to your, for your good. Okay? The process is terrible. The going through it is rough. But you've got to make your way through it. You've got to hang in there and see what's at the end of it. Y'all got that? As hard as it may be, hang in there. Look, look, look. Again, I see our young people here, some people in school. Going through school is, is tough. Look, look at him. <laughs> look at him. Look at him. Ooh. See, it's, 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 it's the thing in the process. And they can't see the end result yet. Because they're so busy in the middle of the process. But at the end of the process, you'll look back at it and you'll say, Thank God I made it. I don't know how I made it, but I made it. And the benefits will be greater than all, all that you went through will be worth what you went through at the end of it. It'll be worth it. And when you look back at it, you'll say, look, I don't even know. When I look back at college, when I, when I graduated from Morgan, I was like, I'm done. All right, my mother, you need to go with your man. I said, no, I'm done. I'm tired. I wish I had gone back down. But, but no, I, was, I was done because I had been through the process. And when they called my name to get that diploma, it was worth everything that I went through. And then when they talk about it, is so, it is it's a great feeling when you go for a job. They say, well, what degree do you have? And you can tell them your degree. Where did you graduate from? I graduated from Morgan State. <laughs> but when I was going through it, it looked like it would never end. Can I get a witness? Yeah. <laughs> it seemed forever. But you know what? Now that I look back at it, it was no time. No time. Yeah. It went by so quickly. And look, look, I know it's hard now. Try paying rent. Yeah. And so, huh? <laughs> I had a member, we had a member. She was a little girl when I first started pastoring that church. A little girl. I'm talking about, I'm talking about their age. When I first started pastoring that church, she graduated from him. Time flies. Yes. I'm telling you, it seems long when you're going through it, but my word to y'all is don't waste no time. Can't get it back. And the worst thing you can do is look back at it and wish you had applied yourself a little harder. You don't want, you don't want any regrets. No regrets. Leave it all out there. Okay, look, you have a life. We used to tell, we used to tell our kids they ain't listen. Uh, but we used to tell them, you have a lifetime to party. The party ain't going nowhere. You need to prepare yourself for adulthood. Okay. Listen, will of God, because the devil. The power of the devil has been defeated, okay? What else was finished was the fulfillment of Scripture. And we'll end on this one. The fulfillment
fulfillment of scripture was fulfilled. He fulfilled all scripture. Okay? When they would challenge him on the scriptures because he did it one way, they did it another way. He said to them, I didn't come to destroy the law, but I came to fulfill the law. Okay? And one, <laughs> and one of the things that, that uh, I thought I think is, is is the teaching on the Sabbath day. And I talked about this, I really talked about this Sunday. I talked about this Sunday in Sunday school. <laughs> That's what I talked about <laughs> in Sunday school. Okay. Some have said that the Old Testament is the New Testament concealed. And the New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. Okay? So Jesus came to really show them what God really meant. Okay? For instance, when they talk about the Sabbath day, and the Sabbath day is what day? It is Saturday. Okay, somebody says, no, the Sabbath day is uh, Saturday. Okay? We worship on what we call the Lord's Day. Sunday, because the church fathers felt that what happened on Sunday, Jesus' resurrection, was greater than the Sabbath day. Okay? So that's why we worship on Sunday. All right? But Jesus makes a different note about Sunday, about worship, actually. Worship isn't for one day. Worship is for seven days. You, you see, he, he came to explain what God meant. And worship isn't for a particular place. It's for wherever you are. We ought to worship. Okay? In your home, we ought to worship. The home has duties. Do you know paying your bills is worship? <laughs> When we were when we were struggling with our finances, uh, Gloria had these. She had the checkbook. I ain't had the checkbook. <laughs> she had the checkbook, and she had these scriptures on the checkbook. Now, how are you going to have scriptures on the checkbook <laughs> and you're not paying your bill? That's not a good witness. Or you paying your bills late. Y'all get my point? Yes. So, so paying your bills is still worship. And you know what else the Bible says? Mm. That we ought not owe any man anything. know how y'all gonna get through school without them school loans. Oh, I ain't kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we paying them for Marissa, man. I'm telling you. That girl in my pocket still. <laughs> I can't get her out of my pocket to save my life. What way? The Sabbath day is Saturday. Jesus peeled on the Sabbath day. And they got mad at him. Right? right. So he he's a lawbreaker. He's healing on the Sabbath, okay? Because the good Pharisees, I ain't going to finish this. We're for the strict following of the law, okay? And they even, well, not really, their job was to interpret. To interpret the law. Okay, so they would look at the Sabbath day and where God would say, do no work. Their job was to interpret what work was. <coughs> so they made all these rules about work. So listen to this one. If you lifted these glasses six inches, that's not work. But if you lifted them seven inches, that's work. 
<laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. If you walked 20 feet, that's not working. But if you walk 21 feet, now you're working. Doesn't make a lot of sense, does it? And that's what they did. They interpreted these uh, the, the law and they made all these rules and regulations that nobody could really follow that stuff. And then what Jesus knew about them is that they were hypocrites. So when he healed on the Sabbath, and, they, and they, they approached him about it. He said, which one of y'all, if your ox fell in the ditch, mm -hmm. wouldn't you go get it out? Mm -hmm. And he knew they would. Mm -hmm. So if you would get your ox that fell in the ditch on the Sabbath, why should not heal? Mm -hmm. Isn't healing greater than your ox? <laughs> okay. And that's where I get in trouble with some church folk. Okay, because sometimes church folk want to uh, uh, interpret certain things in a way that's just wrong. Just wrong. Okay, so, so Lord help us if we forget to do something during the Sunday morning service. Mm. Lord have mercy. They want to send me notes and everything. God, God loves us even though we didn't put it in there. Right? That's right. Doesn't he? That's right. That's right. That's right. He does. Okay. Well, we're going to close at 7 o'clock. Any, any questions or comments about it? Uh -huh. um, okay, so if you, if you said, like, why should he heal on, on the Sabbath day, does that mean he'll heal on the Sabbath day? Say it again. Does that, does that mean it's okay to work on the Sabbath day? Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, in this country, there are some states that have what was known as blue law. Remember, I remember when a store wouldn't open on site. Okay? Uh, a, a Christmas system got crazy. Hey, not only are they open every day, they open all day every day. Okay? But, but no, the Sabbath day is Saturday. Okay? And this is what else the Lord said about the Sabbath day. And, and thanks for your questions. The Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. It's, it, it's a day of rest for us. That's the intent. It was a day of rest. Okay? They made it into some big law that you shouldn't do. And if you did it, you were law breaker. Okay? Any other, any other questions about, about any of that? All right. If not, uh, we're going to close. Thank y'all so much for coming. Uh,